Welcome to the Excellence at Work podcast, where we explore the strategies and best practices that drive business success. I'm Rachel Cook, COO of Brandon Hall Group and the host of our podcast, along with members of our executive team. In each episode, we'll dive into the latest trends, insights, and real-world examples from some of the most exciting leaders from organizations worldwide. Be part of our journey and learn from the best as we discuss innovative approaches and cutting-edge technologies for talent management, learning and development, leadership, diversity and inclusion, and more. Well, hi there. Brandon Hall Group Faithfuls, and it's great to be back with you again. This is Michael Rochelle, our Chief Strategy Officer and one of the principal analysts here at the Brandon Hall Group. I'm really pleased. Graham and I have had a chance to catch up before, but this is super exciting for all of those Gen AI folks that are out there as Graham and now has John joining him as team as president of Cypher Learning. And John, welcome. And so maybe you Thank could you. give uh, the audience uh, a little bit of your background. Sure, sure. Great to meet you. Thank you for the invitation to join. Yeah, I, I've, uh, I've been at uh, Cypher Learning for about four weeks now. Uh, excited to be here. Um, Graham and I have obviously gotten to, to meet and know each other for several months now. And uh, I, I would say that, you know, part of the reason why I'm here is, is the, the product and you know, the breadth of customers that we can serve is tremendous. It's, it's really, um, you know, been a blow away for me to see the impact of our product. Uh, but my background is um, I just spent about six and a half years in uh, vertical SaaS and payments. So serving a lot of services businesses. I ran a portfolio of software companies at a company called EverCommerce. We uh, acquired about 53 different software companies in the last six years. And so I ran a portfolio that served uh, services businesses across healthcare, home services, and fitness and wellness to deliver basically systems of action to run their business. So everything from a small spa, studio, home services, healthcare business, all the way up to you know large multinational franchises like Anytime Fitness, Orange Theory, uh, Neighborly was a big client of ours. They've got you know field services. Um, as well as, you know, surgery centers and, uh, you know, pediatric centers. So um, really helping them engage their customers and deliver, you know, a delightful customer experience. And so uh, prior to that, though, I was about eight and a half years in education technology. I was at Blackboard where I helped launch a number of new uh, services to help, um, you know, large uh, university systems, large private colleges, um, large uh, community college systems to um, launch and deliver online degree programs. And then prior to that, I served as uh, EVP of sales at 2U and so helped launch some of the, you know, very early on uh, online learning programs at uh, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, their first online MBA program, Georgetown's online nursing program and others. And so um, about 25 years in in software technology management um, and just, you know, thrilled to be here. That's fantastic. And Graham, you must be excited about having John join the team as well. Oh, yeah. I'm extremely excited, believe me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you know, as you, as you know, I'm very, very focused on the technology and the product aspect of Cypher Learning. And I have been since day one. And, you know, we were going through the, the classic story where you have a founder who is really, really good at some stuff, but not as great at other stuff. And Cypher Learning got to the point where it made much more sense for me to be at a focus primarily on the product and the technology. And so I think John and I are going to make a great tech team in terms of growing Cypher Learning. So John, I'm curious, what, you know, Gen AI is uh, relatively new, but super exciting. I think, I think Gen AI decided it's growing in dog years, like every month it goes (laughs) by. Is like 10 years of traditional technology development. What drew you to the space? What intrigued you to, to take a look at the space and join Cypher Learning? What, yeah, well, well, it's it's really exciting because um, pr- prior to some of the experiences I mentioned earlier, I spent eight and a half years at, at AOL and I ran our search business. So Google was our first partner uh, back in 2001. 
uh, when they really were first getting started on large language models. And so I spent a lot of time, uh, eventually became the general manager of our search and local businesses there and spent a lot of time with Google just understanding, you know, how large language models are designed, uh, how to uh, respond to open-ended queries in a search box, uh, what refinement and, um, you know, machine learning can do to develop relevant responses. Um, so that really was a pretty exciting time for me and, you know, developed a lot of multivariate testing to um, understand from a consumer perspective what the type of response that would generate the, the type of engagement we're looking for. And, you know, very similarly is where Gen AI, Gen AI is, has gone. Now you've got a, um, you know, a top end uh, instruction uh, capabilities to help the model learn and and kind of um, drive towards a, a value of relevance and response to a, a consumer, you know, or a user inquiry or, or set of instructions. And so when I was looking for my next opportunity um, and I came across uh, this opportunity to for learning, it was a huge fit for me. I, I love transformational technologies. I love growth businesses. I love, uh, you know, times of chaos when, when the industry is trying to figure out um, how they might use this to advance, you know, L and D and education, uh, you know, uh, globally. And we've got such a tremendous global reach and customer base that I was excited about the opportunity to impact, um, you know, that, that group in a new way with, with Gen AI. Exciting. And, and Graham, take us behind the curtain. Like, what are going to be the top initiatives? What are going to be the big things that you're going to be pushing now with the company now that you have John on board? Well, I think, you know, there's one thing just about our AI strategy and there's another thing about our business strategy. So as far as the AI strategy goes, when ChatGBT first came out, it became quite obvious that almost all the stakeholders of our learning platform could benefit from Gen AI. So instructors, learners, managers, administrators. So rather than pigeonhole ourselves and say, we're only going to do something for instructors, for example, or only for learners, we called our strategy AI 360, just to reinforce the fact that we can see how AI is going to help almost everyone. So the strategy, that's the umbrella, is AI 360. But tactically, we decided we're going to focus on instructors first because they are very overworked people and we can obviously save them a lot of time and money through allowing them to build educational content using AI. And that was what we've called our Cypher Copilot, which is doing really well. It's, it's actually amazingly enough, you talk about you know the dog years, it's already been out in for, I think, nine months, but it seems like nine years. Right. Um, but we're working very hard right now on features for learners to help them learn much more quickly than they have done before. And once we've done that, we're going to focus on managers and administrators. So that's the kind of the overall AI strategy. As far as the business strategy, John can probably talk to that just as well as I can at this point. But I think the idea is that it's all about finding the areas that really, really benefit immediately from that technology. So there are some industries that are laggards who, you know, might shy away. It's a waste of our time to try and sell our stuff to laggards because there's not going to be a good fit where there are other industries, specific verticals, where they immediately see the value and then you can get a quick sale and a larger sale than you otherwise would be able to. So there's the AI strategy, which I think, you know, it's obviously always refining, but I think it's fairly clear. And obviously one of the reasons that John joined the company, and once again, we're extremely happy to have him on board, is to make sure Cypher Learning efficiently finds the areas that we're most valued and drive revenue accordingly. Yeah, it's interesting, John. Thanks, Grandma. It's a, it's a very interesting time for providers. And I think you have a, a, a very cool, unique background. Well, what do you think you're going to leverage from your previous experiences that are going to be able to help Cypher kind of decipher, you know, the marketplace? <laughs> Well, um, you know, we're, we're spending a lot of time, uh, again, I'm, I'm four weeks in, so uh, I'm, I'm very much, you know, listening, learning, uh, starting to identify, you know, some of the areas that we need some focus around. Um, the, the good news is, is Cypher Learning's uh, suite of services appeals to a very broad audience um, globally. 
And that's helped us to, you know, acquire uh, and support customers in a variety of different industries uh, and geographic markets, languages. Um, so we're very broadly distributed, which is incredible uh, how quickly the team have done that. Um, I, I think for, for the next step, obviously, we, to Graham's point, we want to focus on where can we have the greatest impact for those uh, buyers that, you know, are really facing some, some challenges and, and some compelling, you know, business challenges that, um, you know, learning and developing their employee base and their leadership team is a, is a critical component of their, you know, growth strategy. So if you look at um, industries like franchise, uh, franchising, which is an industry I just came from, where we served a lot of uh, businesses, uh, you know, Anytime Fitness is an example. They're, they're a global franchise operation, you know, thousands of locations on every continent including Antarctica, which is kind of, you know, amazing. <laughs> right. uh, but, you know, they have a high turnover, right? They've got a lot of employees that are young, uh, you know, front desk office people. They've got trainers that want to be a trainer, you know, one month and something different the next month. And so they've got to have the ability to kind of reach down and train employees in a very rapid, just-in-time way and continue to build bench strength so that as they acquire new operations, they just merged with Orange Theory, for example, you know, to bring staff together, they've got various bench strength and various capabilities that they can train and upskill and deploy very quickly across the enterprise. And so for someone like, you know, Anytime Fitness, uh, McDonald's is a customer of ours, um, you know, Hyundai, U-Haul, these are all customers that, uh, you know, really rely on talent development. And so we're looking for customers who see learning as a competitive advantage for their business and a requirement, not only for their brand and their customer experience, but also compliance. You know, there's a lot of regulatory, uh, you know, issues that are coming up that they have to continue to make sure their employees are, are getting trained and adhering to, you know, local or regional or national compliance. And so we believe our platform can do that because we've got such rapid, um, not only development of courses, but versioning and updating of courses down to a personalized level. So if you think about, you know, at a geography level, you know, region, you know, call it North America or EMEA or Asia PAC down to a country level specific to the regulatory environment there down to, you know, the markets, down to the specific um, location, down to the job function, um, that's hard. That's hard to do. A lot of companies, you know, we have some one banking institution that's a customer of ours. They have 800 people inside of their company that just do course development. Mm -hmm. We can change that dramatically by rolling their costs by 75% and save them hundreds and hundreds of hours of development time to turn it into a opportunity for a competitive advantage versus a cost center and, and a laggard, you know, strategy. I'm sold. We're, that's a, <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, funny you should for say four that, weeks, boy, I, I got to tell you, you're me, on it. Name, you know, I Graham, I, I'm curious, you know, piggybacking and kind of, or dovetailing off of what John just brought up. You say you don't want to chase laggards. Like no one wants to get a prospect confused with a suspect. Where, where do you see the big growth areas coming? You know, do you, you know, we're under that bell curve now, like 10 guys been out there for uh, almost two years now, and people are starting to come around to it, understand it. But where do you see like the big areas where people are catching on fast? Is it based on specific use cases? Is it vertical size of companies, maturity of their learning strategy? You know, where do you see the quick expansion areas? Is that for you, John, or for me? Well, it, once you start, then I can I can uh, chime in if you want. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's funny. One of the things I was uh, going to say was I, I, we've got this thing called the Win Wire in our Slack channel, <clears throat> where you can see you know daily new deals. And I won't mention the name of the company just in case I can't. But it was a household name. But but it was exactly the sweet spot that John was talking about, which is it's a franchise model. <clears throat> we've got a distributed, <clears throat> very large company, lots of partners. So it does seem like companies that network, whether mm -hmm. it's, and we do have special features specifically for networks and customer portals. So you can easily partition the system into lots of different portals, each with their own custom URLs, color themes, set of courses. So we do have some, you know, specific functionality, make, which makes our system really well suited for those. But 
as John mentioned, they're also the kind of people where training is like, it has to be a core competency. It's not like just like a nice to have. So I think, you know, one of the things that we have noticed is franchises and partner models are ones where training is a, is a core thing. There are, take training companies, companies that actually train other people for a living. That's another situation where they, they, took, they teach a lot of people. So you get a lot of active learners, which is good for our revenue. But it's one where building engaging courses quickly is a core competence. So I would just say as an overall thing, it's where, where learning is a really, really important part to your business. That's typically where we do very well. Yeah, and, and I just add to to the, you know, kind of problem statement that we're we believe is the growth area is, you know, on one side of the spectrum, there's there's general compliance training that everybody has to do every year. And, and of course, everybody loves compliance training, right? <laughs> no, it's hard. It's horrible, right? It's it's boring. It's not relevant. It's uh, it's one size fits all. Um, it's a resource drain every year. You know, you're clicking through the slides and just trying to get through it. And hopefully, you know, you pass the first time and not uh, have to go back and do remediation. And so w we believe that, you know, for, for certain companies, um, you know, the, the ability to develop relevant, personalized, engaging, right? And, you know, other tools, gamification, right? Competencies and skills that can be aligned automatically to the needs of your workforce um, are really important and take time. Uh, historically to, to do right because we can do that so accurately and so quickly and in a relevant and high quality way um, it's it, it's really a game changer and so we're looking for people that don't look at training as a check the box right we're looking at people that say listen if I look at my employee base and every time someone leaves to pay for that replacement it's a 20 percent uplift in the compensation which is Usually what a lot of people are finding right now, it's a double digit percentage to go on the open market and try to replace people because of, you know, coming out of COVID and inflation. And so most of the leaders are recognizing that just like when during COVID, when you had to invest in your house, right, I've got to find ways to kind of raise my, uh, my value, right, of my home because I'm not moving and I'm not selling. I've got to do the same to my employee base. I got to find ways to raise my employee base, the value and the contribution of the people that I've already got in seat and make them right aligned with the skills that we need as a business. And so that's what we think we can fill. Let's go a little deeper. Let's talk about Cypher Learning as a company. And the reason I bring this up is, you know, folks that we talk to every day in the market, they say, I don't need a solution provider. What I need is a partner in my success. Someone that will grow with me, be there in the good times, bad times, shoulder to shoulder. In fact, in, in our recent research, it showed that being a partner is as valuable as any cutting edge functionality that's out there. What would you want our audience to know about Cypher Learning as a company? It's people, it's culture, what you stand for. You know, take us, Take us, you know, backstage in your company. Um, I, I can start with that, and then maybe maybe John will add his his own comments. So um, I'm actually glad you brought that up because a lot of people forget about that aspect of doing business. But we've always been very pleasant to work with, and very positive about like a can-do attitude. So we've got a lot of data points now of companies who will, you know, they'll narrow it down to like three different, you know, three different um, products. And they, and many times they'll pick us and we'll say, well, why? And they go, well, yeah, your product was the best one. That, that's true. But we really like working with your team. Like they were pleasant. They were good fun to work with. They were, they reacted quickly. They had a very positive attitude. Uh, and, you know, ever since the early days, those are the kind of people that I try to hire. People like, hey, I would actually, I really enjoy talking with this person. They're like very, you know, pleasant individuals. I also think that quite a lot of the larger deals do require a certain flexibility in our product because we need to integrate with certain systems that they've, they've, they've got. And I think we've done a really good job of architecting our platform so that either we can do the integration right away out of the box 
or we can do it relatively quickly. So if a customer has an unusual thing that they need to do, it's not a huge deal for us to be able to do that. So, um, so I think, you know, I've, I've heard that time and time again now. And I mentioned we've got that wind wire on Slack. And one of the things that we add always is why they did the deal with us. It's not just they did mm -hmm. the deal, but like why. Right. And so often in the why area, it's like because they really like working with our team. They liked how quickly we moved and they're very satisfied with the service. Um, and then there's the, the, there's the after, after the sell, which is our support team is generally really good as well. And, you know, support is not an easy thing to do. And these learning platforms are quite sophisticated. And uh, so we've invested a lot of energy into training our support team. And they're typically very engaging, very quick to react. So after the fact, that's another thing that we hear. And people regularly say, hey, I just want to let your, you know, guys, that your support team is awesome. So that's just, you know, from my, from my perspective. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I I just add that you know anytime we talk about partnerships, um, I always think about you know first of all I, I look at long term timeframes, right? We look for people and companies and leaders that um, ha have the same type of trust in the type of partnership that we want to build together. Um, we have alignment around our mission and vision and values. That's really important to us. Uh, one of the first things that we did as a leadership team. When I first joined is we spent three days together building trust, understanding each other and, and kind of revisiting our, our purpose, mission and vision. And, you know, we're really, really got focused on, hey, what's changed since we first uh, put these together and um, how might we evolve this into a new, new North Star? And, and a couple of things that we talked about were, you know, really giving learners the power to succeed in a rapidly changing world. Right. That's important. The world is changing every day by the minute. And how do we give learners the ability to access, engage content and learn and, and deploy that in a professional, personal, social setting quickly by giving them, you know, the ability so through our platform to power, you know, millions and millions of learning moments every day. That's, that's our mission and vision right now is, is we're taking that forward. And so you know, alignment with those things, as well as our values, you know, things like curiosity, empowerment. Um, those are the things that make great learning cultures. And so if we find partners that share those, you know, types of, uh, you know, purpose, mission, vision, and values, I think those are the ones that will really be the most impactful um, in business and in the world. Couldn't agree with you more on that. I, I love some of the soundbite quotes from, from both of you. One that really resonated with me is, these moments of learning, you know, we've, we've got to think that small, yet it's not small in the truest sense of the word, right? We're not talking about micro learning. We're talking about there are moments happening millions of times a day within organizations where we have to address whether or not people are ready for those, those moments to apply that, that learning. I think your technology and, and the platform that you offer, you know, really puts organizations in a position to be able to, to handle that. And I think also too, our research shows that whenever you're introducing new technology, partnerships are even more valuable. You know, the ability to know that, hey, I might, I, I clearly don't know it as well as you do, you know, the buyer, I'm depending on you to be that guidance, you know, be there to help me to understand how to get the most out of it, most important, the governance around it. And, and I, and I think this is super important for a lot of the folks that are listening is to know that they can come to an organization like yours and learn about Gen AI at the same time they're learning about the application of it and, the, and the use of it just makes them better learning professionals. How did, I want to close with one thing that's on a lot of people's minds is people are worried about Gen AI in some degree, you know, is this going to replace instructional designers? Is this going to replace subject matter experts? I don't think it will. I think artificial intelligence and human intelligence need to cohabitate. How are you making sure that the people that work with you know that you're trying to put the power of this in their hands, but it's not something that can be done without them? Well, you know, virtually all the communications outbound that we do have that message as part of the, you know, the component. 
and you know i give a lot of webinars as you know michael mm -hmm. <laughs> and and those outbound communications is all about empowering you to focus on the things that you do best and i really believe that because that's how i use ai every single day i am using ai more and more in my life and i find it just basically saves me time so i can it's like quite remarkable whether it's building software or brainstorming ideas, the AI is an accelerant. And I think the main thing is that once you experience that, it's usually pretty clear that an AI, an AI is not going to replace me anytime soon. You know, maybe in a thousand years, I don't know. I'll, I'll be dead by then anyway. Um, but, but I do think it's really important, though, that once you've experienced that, you also realize that people who don't partner with an AI are going to be at a disadvantage. So, so when I'm publicly speaking, it's from my own personal experience, I've got a quite a good idea about how to use an AI. But it's also a, a message of hope, like, guys, if you can embrace this stuff, you are going to give yourself that additional advantage as well. Um, and it's the same thing. I've got two young boys, and you know, I'm constantly thinking about when do I introduce AI into their lives. A little bit too early so far. Because I don't want them to get left behind in the human race either. Yep. Yeah, I, I just came back from uh, ASU GSV, a, a big ed tech conference uh, that happens every year. And, and, you know, some of the themes that hit on your question, you know, around, uh, you know, fear of unknown, uh, academic freedom uh, is one of the things that a lot of uh, institutions and uh, instructional design and, and teams worry about is, is how do we make sure that we are in control of the quality of the product and um, the research and, um, you know, professional uh, backgrounds and the SME backgrounds that go into developing a great course. And, uh, you know, all those things are, are considered in the way that Graham and the engineering team have designed the product, you know, to be able to address where and how you use AI and, you know, the ability to tweak and tune um, the areas that you would like to rely more or less on that type of uh, input as a part of it. But I, I think in the long run, as, as it becomes more pervasive in the daily lives of, you know, all users, um, you know, one of the stats that Julie Evans shared at, at who, who runs uh, Project Tomorrow, at one of the um, sessions, she said that 45% of high school students are using Gen AI regularly to pursue curiosity and learning moments and interests outside of school. And only 7% of teachers are regularly using AI. And so that's the gap right now. There's a groundswell of learners who institutions and companies, right, are trying to serve as their mission, right, in terms of their customers and, and how they, um, you know, are delivering learning. And so we see it as a, as a, a tremendous tool to help them, um, you know, save time around the drudgery and toil of what had taken hundreds of hours to develop in courses and focus more on, you know, student success and outcomes and engagement in the classroom with this as a, an important tool in that. Yeah, that, that is actually quite amusing when you say that, yeah. that, the tools, that it's, the, it's the kids who are adopting this stuff way faster than the teachers. No fear. Which yeah. doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Right. Well, John, Graham, thank you. I think this has been a great example of one plus one equals three. I think it's super that you've been able to join the team at Site for Learning. We look forward to big things happening. With your organization, Graham, I know I'll, I'll see you out there again in another fantastic session around Gen AI. This is Michael Rochelle, Chief Strategy Officer at the Brand Hall Group, and thank you both for joining us today.